my new opener is um, what is the role of music in your childhood? Wow, you, that's a great question. Um, mu the role of music in my childhood is a, a, a long story, so I'll try to do it as shortly, as quickly as I can, I'm sorry. Um, I, was, uh, I grew up in a family that was not musical, um, and um, no one in the structure of my family was really uh, musical, uh, but I'm an adopted kid. So I, I had a desperate desire to play and to be uh, a writer and a singer. It wasn't until I met my, uh, I had started to write a little bit and to sing a little bit, and I'm a pretty shy guy when it comes to that, or, or, and I'm learning that to be better with that, of course, over time, but um, I had sort of started down that road, and then when I met my biological father, I discovered um, that I had deep family roots in music. Um, and so as a consequence, it gave me the, that strength of mind to, to pursue that a little bit. You know, um, and so um, it didn't really play a role in my life in a direct way, but it was always in my periphery. So to find out that genetically that was true of my family was a neat moment. It really helped crystallize the That is pursuit. so cool yeah. and interesting because it sort of suggests that there is a, a almost, it's literally in your DNA, like it's it, a biological I, imperative to work. I believe to, that to it that. is based on my experience. I believe that's true. Um, the... I laugh with my my uh, my adopted dad. He always says, "Well, you might have got the music gene from your biological family, but you get country music." <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, which is true. We grew up listening to it. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And the reason we're talking today is the new single, yes. "Crazy Enough." Um, yeah. And when I when I read titles, I always try to think, like, "Crazy enough to do what?" <laughs> Well, isn't that the question? Exactly. Um, growing up as a kid, well, first of all, I have a teenager at home. We're watching, we've been watching the last few years him do all these goofy things, jumping off the garage for like whatever you do. reason, you know, silly skate ramps in the back and just all kinds of crazy stuff. And, uh, you know, in my youth, um, I have a number of scenarios. Um, my cousin and I used to run around Manchester on BMX bikes, and it was a cliff we used to jump off of. And, oh my gosh, all this crazy stuff. <laughs> And um, so I, I watched my son do that. I remember being on Singing Beach and, 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 and running into the, I mean, just doing silly, silly things. And so watching my child do that, we were having a conversation, a, a writing session with some friends, and, and uh, I was actually complaining about my child um, being a little reckless as he was. And um, so that was a universal experience. I mean, everybody had done that. Both Walt and Mike had a place in Muscle Shoals where they jumped off a cliff when they were kids, just like we had in Massachusetts, <laughs> and, 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 you know, so that was something that um, was so universal, we thought, we'll write this, but you have to be crazy, but not all the way crazy. Just enough. Just crazy enough so that it doesn't cross over, you know, and as a parent, <laughs> that's what you worry about. So we, we had a lot of fun, and the song just, just came out of that conversation. Yeah. And it's also, I, I, I just realized that you said you have to be crazy enough, I thought, which is also true when you pursue a career in music. You have to be crazy enough. <laughs> I think that's the inside joke, um, yeah. because it is, it, it is not for the faint of heart. Mm -hmm. I always say, um, you, it's just a tough business, and, and the expectations are high, and uh, it's, I think sometimes it's a blessing to have that pursuit yeah, yeah. the the EP already did really well and already got great reaction, and it's being released in here in America. Yes, the first single was "Never Didn't Love You," and it went out in December. I forget the exact day, and um, it was a great early start for us. Um, it was a top thirty record here, and, and um, you know, really exciting for us. And so the next step now is crazy enough. Uh, the single and the EP, and the EP will be out on July seventeenth. And uh, it's really exciting, really exciting time. Because you're known to a lot of people as you know, Canadian country artists. You did extremely well in that yeah. market. Um, yeah. Which, by the way, happy early Canadian Canada Day. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, the uh, which is why I wear the shirt. No, but you're really you have your roots here. Um, I do because you already both. mentioned Manchester, so it's it's not you're not just from up north. No, I'm very you, lucky. You know. I've I've been it's been a bit of a melting pot for me. I've I've had. Um, a lot of experiences on both sides, um, and my mom is an American and my dad is a Canadian, so we, we've had that 
that sort of dynamic in our family, and it's wonderful. Uh, my majority of our family here still live in, in the Chicago area and, uh, and in the Boston area. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, it's nice to have both sides, uh, and it's made transitioning and being here a lot easier because I, it is it just feels like home. So, right. Yeah, and you are as that mentioned first. before. <laughs> you're you're uh, you're joining us here in Nashville. For yeah, this we are. Uh, this town is so important um, to um, not only like from a market point of view and from a uh, from a, uh, a big country music point of view, but from a creative point of view. This has um, been such a good place for us. We've been very blessed to have doors open. Um, I can't. I wish I could tell you exactly how to do that. I don't know how, but it happened for <laughs> us. And, so we've, this town has been really good to us. My wife and kids um, have um, some friends here, and so it's really, we're excited. Yeah, very cool. Does it feel in any way like a new beginning? Or does it just feel like the continuation of what you were doing? You know, it really doing? feels like the continuation, um, because um, we've spent a lot of time here. Um, so we really, I, jokes, in we the big thing for me is just being able to come here and walk into my own closet and have clothes <laughs> and shoes and you know that's really the biggest thing I'm excited about is just having yeah. space that's um, dedicated to us and it's just easier so that's that's the one thing that'll be different I think everything else is really you know very much like what we've been doing yeah because you know the area the, the town knows you yeah you and then as a musician you're always yeah. traveling anyways so exactly, there's a yeah. lot of that going on so it's just home bases change and. And this is just a way better home base uh, for our, what we're trying to do. So. Yeah. One thing I want to come back to is you mentioned a sort of inherent shyness and mm. you need to overcome that. And I think what I see a lot in the music industry, including myself, a lot of us are introverts um, who love people. How did you overcome that? What were the things that you had to overcome in the first place? And then how did you do that? Yeah, I think it's fair to say I'm actually an extrovert. I think probably come down on that side but when it comes to my my creativity and my art I'm shy um, so it's an interesting dynamic I think every artist goes through a period of um, maybe self-doubt is not the right word but just you're not sure you know you, you want it to be real you work hard you believe and there's sometimes there's some doubt and stuff that creeps in and that's where the shyness kind of gets created for me um, and the only way past it is just full of um, somebody asked me, what's the secret? You've, you've had some success, you're continuing to chase that. What would you tell someone they should do? And just like the song or anything, I don't know how to open those doors, technically speaking, but the one thing I can tell you for sure is just don't quit. Uh, because I think that's where it really stops for most people. Is it, it is hard. It's really hard. It is really yeah, hard. Yeah, it really is hard. Yeah. And it's, um, you get beat up, mm -hmm. um, you, you have self-doubt, you have days where you come off the stage and you and it feels right, and eventually you get more of those days and less of the other ones. So that's really for me how I've overcome that, and I'm still I still work on it every day. It's still something that's still part of my my makeup. And I think it's I think someone being a little nervous or going through some of that anxiety is is just a very honest um, response to something you're really proud of and want to do a good job of. Yes, I think that's very important. It it sort of it's almost proof that you care. You know, it's proof that it's important. If it ever stops for me to where I don't get that butterfly feeling and whatever, and I wish sometimes it would stop, but um, I think if it ever stops, I would be concerned because it's part of the thing. It's mm -hmm. part of the, the experience. Yeah. And the building a live show, um, I've always been interested in, because in, that's extremely hard too, is figuring out who do I want to be on stage. Yes, you want to yeah. be yourself, but there's still a persona that has to be on stage, not a character, but... I think that's part of it too. I think, that? I think it's the same conversation. I think uh, early on you try to be who you've seen. I think that's pretty normal for an artist in their growth. And eventually you become comfortable in your own skin. Uh, there are very few places I feel more comfortable mm -hmm. than on stage. There are very few places, I, for whatever reason. But it took me a while to find that, that, that sort of relaxed happiness moment. Um, and when I tried to be something that I wasn't, which I did, early on in my career, um, which I think people see through, um, it was stressful when it became, let's go out and just be who we are and, and play our music and don't overanalyze it and just go and have fun. That's when it started to happen in a positive way. 
Um, you know, it's still building shows. It's still a challenge. You still have to try to figure out orders and tempos and all that stuff. And I don't profess to be an expert, but uh, being on stage is yeah, probably the easy part. <laughs> For really. a lot of people. Because yeah. <laughs> I think the a lot of things that we, we have to work on, um, live shows, songwriting, there's no, there's no, okay, now I know everything. There's always more to learn. There's always more to practice. It's lifelong. Mm -hmm. And you have good days and bad days. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with the bad days? Just remember the good days or do yeah, you go back I, to that analyzing? And I'm just to learning not to beat myself up and move on and move forward. Yeah. So, yeah, and there's la as I said, there's less of them now than there used to be, and I presume that will continue. <laughs> there will be fewer and fewer yeah. and fewer yeah. as it goes on. Yeah. The, one of the things that I'm, I've now been examining is that, and I th we touched on that at CRS, is that relationship between happiness and success, mm -hmm. where it's so easy to think that success creates happiness. I'll have a number one hit and then I'll be happy. No, you won't. <laughs> For like five minutes. Well, I would um, be. How, <laughs> yeah, just trust, you know. But the, that's not, you know, that brings joy. Mm -hmm. But that real happiness, um, yeah. that, that groundedness, the relaxed happiness that you mentioned prior. Yeah, freedom um, for me is just Where does that to, come from? Yeah, freedom for me is getting to do something you love every day um, without, you know, without it being about um, what other people think. Uh, this business is, is, that's just part of this business. You have to be, you know, obviously you want to have success so you can continue to do it. But the big goal for me is to be doing something I love every single day, you know, and that's happiness, where happiness comes from, to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. I think that that's a good lesson. I think we spend a lot of time chasing the periphery and don't really work on the happiness. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the secret. It, it has been so far for me. Yeah, but it's tough. And it's especially, I think, early on when you're trying to build something because it feels like you, you're not getting to know what you want. There's a lot of people guiding your career. There's a manager telling you you should do X, Y, yeah. or Z, and it feels like you don't have control, and it feels like it's never going to happen. And you want you know what you want, but the only thing you can see is that you don't have it. So I think that's yeah. tough to deal with, too, sometimes. There's winning, which is important to me. I want to win because that's part of my DNA. But um, at the same time, I want to do it in such a way that I can enjoy it, like truly enjoy it. Um, I'm really lucky to have a great team at Will and Nashville where they really understand um, the song comes first and if we honor the song we'll be fine and that's all I needed to hear when we, when we got together and, and um, started moving forward with our project uh, the thing that mattered most to me was that we do great songs yeah the rest will take care of itself and, and we've honored that um, the EP that comes out is, is that I think Mm -hmm. um, and we've really focused on that. So for me, I don't have a lot of push and pull from other people saying you need to do this, or you need to do that, or you need to do this. I, I certainly listen to the advice and I'm thankful for it. Um, but everybody on this side, I'm lucky. I don't have people telling me to do stuff I want to do. Um, they're like-minded in, in songs. Yeah. Or this, this it might be because the things you're doing is what you should be doing, so they don't have to guide you. Um, I, that might be part of it. Yeah, I think if, a, if, if you, whatever genre it is, whatever moves you, whatever you feel passionate about, you, you follow your muse and you'll be fine. I think it's when you try to do things to preempt, um, well, this is going to happen in the market, so let's go this way. And I've made that mistake. I learned from it, and, and I think that as long as you're just doing what you love, you'll always be, it doesn't guarantee success, but it certainly guarantees that you're moving in the direction that you should be moving. That's like the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is, and I think yeah. when I do, you know, coaching sessions with with artists or songwriters, I always want to say, here's all these things that you can use and you can keep in mind, and it may not lead to success, but it can always lead to happiness and a fulfillment, um, which will feel like success when so, you get there. Songwriting is great because you get to write from a third person point of view. A lot of mm -hmm. times, you can go, what would this person say? And um, I've had some great mentors uh, in my songwriting career over the years, and. and um, both Michael Pop, who produced the, the EP Crazy Enough, and Walt Aldridge, who's a, a regular contributor, and we write with Walt a lot. Um, um, Mike had said to me one time, he said, well, what would you say? Right? Yeah. What would you say? And I went, well, this is what I would say. He said, that's what we're going to write. Because this is you. This is your thing. That's why with the EP, when we picked the songs, it was really important that they were a great representation of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the encouragement I got, and I'm, you know, you do your best to stick with it. It's fun to write from third person sometimes, too, and yeah, think yeah. outside of what you would think. Um, yeah, but yeah. when it comes to the big songs and the important ones, 
sometimes I just really feel like I have three minutes to say something. That's what she means that to me. Mm-hmm. And what, as the songwriter in you, what do you feel is the, the sort of highest compliment or achievement that the songwriter can chase rather than just a performer? Um, people being moved by a song. There isn't awards for that. There isn't um, money for that. There's a moment in time where you connect with, with an individual in an audience and you can see it. Like their eyes, they look at you, whether it's a... Like I've seen, I've had tears, I've had lots of different moments, but the, that, that connection is, that's probably the... That's a high you can't get anywhere mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's because I think, and it's you know, it's the same for me. Like I can, there are songs that I that I they're my friends, you know. And sometimes something's whether really happy or really sad, and yeah. I just kind of need to hang out with them. Um, and I think I always, you know, if you ever if I ever get the chance to talk to the people who wrote them, that's what I would say um, that it it connected with me. And that's as a songwriter, that's the, the highest compliment. The highest compliment when someone says. Um, we got a note on a song that we had a YouTube video for a number of years ago, and one of the notes was, we played your song at our grandmother's funeral. And I was so moved by that, and it was a thank you from a completely random, I never met the people, mm-hmm. had no knowledge of them, or, you know, whatever, and that was a, that was a really, actually, it was a very important moment, because it made me feel like we were, 